Do not move. The tour group huddled close to each other, their terrified eyes staring into the black void of a chasm that had opened up in front of them, behind them, all around them. They were cut off, an island of land only 50 square feet, barely enough to hold the 13 members of the tour that were left. The rest, including the tour guides and security guards, were somewhere down inside the chasm. A pair of terrified eyes shifted and squinted against the glaring sun that was slowly sinking toward the horizon. The eyes spotted something across the chasm. Something familiar. What is that? The owner of the eyes asked, tapping the shoulder of the woman next to him. Do you see that? Is that someone? The woman that belonged to the shoulder that had been tapped roused herself from her traumatized stupor. Huh? There. See that? The man asked, trying to shield his eyes from the sun that refused to relent, even as it began to set. Not a cloud in the sky to relieve them from the heat and glare. Look! A few of the survivors turned their heads in the direction the man was pointing. All struggled to see what he was talking about. I don't see anything, the woman whispered, then closed her eyes and curled in on herself as she lay down in the dirt and grass that was the only comfort on their horrible little island. No, no, I see someone, the man exclaimed. He stood and waved his arms over his head. Hey, hey! Over here, help us! The man squinted harder and was sure that there was someone standing on the opposite side of the chasm, a side that was at least a quarter of a mile, probably more, away from the island. The figure raised its arms and waved back. They may have been shouting, but the man couldn't hear over the wind that was whipping around the chasm. Get help! The man shouted. Go get help! The figure stopped waving its arms. The man smiled as it looked like the figure was backing away. Then the figure turned and ran. Fast. Oh no, someone whined. Oh God, no! The man reluctantly looked away from the retreating figure and glanced over his shoulder. All he saw were the other survivors standing up and grabbing at each other. Then complete panic. What? the man asked, trying to stand his ground as everyone pushed back against him. What is it? Then he saw what was coming. What he thought was a far-off dark cloud in the sky, possibly some relief finally from the unrelenting sun, was not a cloud. Not at all. Clouds don't break into several individual clouds. Individual clouds with wings. Individual clouds with wings and teeth. Wings and teeth and claws. The man screamed as the pterosaurs, he had no idea what species they were and didn't really care, got closer and closer. He wasn't the only one screaming. A hand reached out and grabbed his arm, knocking him off balance. His right foot slipped, and he tried to keep from falling, but the ground was too unstable for him to maintain his footing. Even with the excellent tread of his brand new hiking boots, his feet slid on the loose dirt and shifting grass. The man's arms pinwheeled, smacking against others that were similarly distressed about their sudden lack of stability. Then the man was in open air, falling backward into the chasm. His scream grew, as did the screams of those that tumbled off the edge of the island with him. He watched in utter terror as the sky diminished, the chasm closing in around him the further he fell. The man's horror grew to a level that almost drove him insane as the horror of the day grew worse. So much worse. One, two, three people were plucked from their free falls by the massive claws of the pterosaurs that swooped down into the chasm to catch some easy prey. Men and women he knew, colleagues from the school he taught at, shrieked in pain and fear as their bodies were pierced by talons longer than his forearms. He watched physically unable to turn away as his body continued to plummet as more people died. Those still up on the island were next, helpless to keep from being snagged by more of those claws and talons. He thought of closing his eyes and simply praying for it all to end, but a shadow fell across the man and his eyes flicked to the source. A pterosaur was diving right for him, legs and claws extended, ready for the grab, the man's vocal cords strained to breaking as he screamed harder and louder than he thought physically possible for any human being. The claws reached him and the talons dug in, impaling his torso. The man coughed up half a gallon of blood 